it is a semiconductor. We all know a semiconductor. But in front of a semiconductor, there is a world called as perovskite. Let me first introduce what a perovskite is. A perovskite is an oxide structure, and its typical cubic cell looks something like this. You might have all seen NaCl, uh, BCC, uh, or FCC uh, crystal structures. Just like that, this is a perovskite cubic structure, which forms ABO3 unit cell, wherein A atom sits at the center of the unit cell. B atom is at the corners, and the oxygen surrounds those corners. And the oxygen surrounds those corners. So this is a typical ABO3 perovskite oxide structure. And if you look in the periodic table, and if you look in the periodic table, you can see O is common, which is red. But uh, the green, the green center atom can be lithium, can be sodium, can be potassium, rubidium, cesium, like all other green elements in the periodic table. And the blue atoms, and the blue atoms can be beryllium, scandium, titanium, niobium, molybdenum, and all other blue elements. So just by looking at the structure and the periodic table, you can accommodate almost 60% of the periodic table in this periodic table. Just within one unit cell structure, you can incorporate 60 different elements. And whenever you are incorporating 60 different elements into its uh, 60 different elements based upon their chemical reaction stability, you can get a different properties. So just by using changing the chemistry of the compounds, ABO3 compounds, you have large tunability of chemistry. And these large tunability of chemistry from the periodic table within this unit cell gives us the of, uh, tremendous uh, properties like you can have dielectric peroxide, you have ferroelectric peroxide, which is barium titanate and lead titanate which are uh, used for uh, ferroelectric materials now, ferromagnetism, strontium manganate, calcium manganate, calcium ruthenate, and superconductivity, strontium CaO4, SrCaO2, and other elements. And directly coming to strontium tensile. So just by changing the chemical compounds at A site and at B site, you can get different materials. And from different materials, you obtain these different properties in the bulk form. In the bulk form is in the sense when you are going single crystals. But, but, is there any other way to manipulate this? Not only by chemistry, is there any other knob? Yes, there is another knob that you can use. That is, whenever you are putting these elements in thin film form, in thin film form, that is, that is, the, whenever you are making a thin film, imagine that uh, you are a person sitting on a chair. The interface between you and the chair is very, very crucial. In some of the chairs that you see in uh, uh, railway stations or public places, they are usually hard metallic nature. The reason for uh, them is the environment, the city planners will not put cushions there. Because if you put cushion in a public place area, the people who are sitting on that particular chair will sit forever. On the other hand, if you put a metallic chair, there is some sense of discomfort and that particular people sitting there will move over so that the next person can sit. Similarly, in terms of material aspects, what happens is whenever you are trying to make a thin film, that thin film is made on other material or other substrate. And the interface between the substrate and the film will offer you four degrees of freedom. Spin degree of freedom, charge degree of freedom, orbital degree of freedom, and lattice degrees of freedom. By using these four different controls, you can again alter the properties of perovskite materials in thin film forms, in thin film forms, both by chemistry as well as in thin films. By using the interface architecture, interface effects, you can change the properties of these materials. Let me take a common, common perovskite oxide, strontium titanate, which is a common perovskite uh, insulating substrate that people use in most of the applications. So, and here is a graph which I am showing the mobility of this particular material, strontium titanate. Initially, in early 2000s, it was around 100. But, but as the years is increasing, as we are passing to going day, moving forward, the technology is increasing. The techno, the way you make that particular material in thin film, the defect density is, uh, is decreased. The perfect control of interface is increased, and that you can see, you can see the mobility substantially increased from 10 to the power of 2 in early 2002. Present, it was around 10 to the power of 5, and this is all achieved due to increased and optimized control of technology in making this 
material pristine quality with controlled defect densities and at 2 kelvin right now the mobility is around 10 to the power of 5 yes but whenever you are making devices you don't go down to 2 kelvin you need these devices at room temperature so at room temperature the mobility of this particular oxide semiconductor is really really low it's around 10 it's around 10 just to give you a comparison the silicon mobility is around 1400 or 1500 at room temperature so see the drastic change so you cannot really come out with a device using this particular oxide semiconductor and what is the major major reason for the uh, less mobility the phonons the phonons at room temperature are drastically altering the motion of carriers inside this material and that's how they are getting scattered as the more scattering happens the less the mobility now within this family within this family within this oxide family is there any other semiconductor uh, oxide semiconductor that gives us that gives us best possible mobilities at room temperature and if once that is achieved by interface tuning can we tune the properties of that material yes there entered a material called as barium stannate barium stannate is a peroxide semiconductor with a room temperature mobility of 320 with a room temperature mobility of 320 and it is it has a perfect cubic structure it has a perfect cubic structure and its uh, conduction is mainly happening in pi s orbital where it is expected where it is expected to have a low effective mass as uh, whenever you have a low effective mass you have higher mobility that is one of the reason in this standard system a room temperature mobility is 320 in bulk form in early 1900s it was only 1 to 10 but by improving the structure and the defect density we have come up with the high room temperature mobility of 320 in bulk form but just like ito or just like any other material we want it in thin film forms so here is a simple comparison of uh, the squares or the mobility of silicon uh, as you decrease the carrier density the mobility of the silicon rises up at room temperature the decrease of uh, carrier density implies that there is less electron to electron scattering when at low densities and at low densities you expect high mobility in silicon that is the reason the curve moves upwards as you decrease the density in silicon and coming to coming to strontium titanate it is having no dependence it's almost staying at the same point around 10 for a strontium titanate but in terms of barium uh, standard single crystals, barium standard single crystals, you can see the curve is following silicon. The curve is following silicon, and in fact, it is outperforming silicon at high carrier densities. It is uh, outperforming silicon at high carrier densities. This is in bulk, but when you make the same material in thin films, when you make the same material in thin films, when you make the same material in thin films, what's happening? The mobility is decreasing the mobility is decreasing which is in sharp contrast to silicon silicon is increasing whereas this material is decreasing why is is decreasing in thin films one of the major reasons why it is decreasing is imagine the example of man sitting on a chair in public place whenever the man is sitting on the public place chair he senses some sort of a discomfort the same thing is happening here barium stannate whenever you are growing in thin films you are growing in on substrates and that substrates are not perfectly matched that is the lattice constant the unit cell size of barium stannate is different from the unit cell size of the substrate upon which it is sitting imagine the case wherein a, a big person is sitting on a small chair right or a small person is sitting on a big chair you, in both the cases, you have a discomfort, but imagine a person sitting on his chair, which is of his own size, then it is all happy. The same case is, the same case is happening here. So, barium stannate, when has a lattice constant of 4.1 angstroms, and when you grow this barium stannate on these commonly available substrates, you can see there is a lattice mismatch. The size of barium stannate is different from the size of the substrates, and this induces defects this induces defects into the film and these defects are tend to be charged whenever you have a charged defect in the film the electron goes towards the charge defect the electron gets absorbed by the charge defect and electron hole pair is formed and you lose a moving electron as you lose a moving electron 
the electron mobility decreases the electron mobility decreases one way to eradicate this is grow an insulating layer of barium stannate first grow an insulating la layer of barium stannate first and expect these threading dislocations to reach to a minimum point and then put your active doped layer put active doped layer or the other technique is find a material which perfectly lattice matches so here comes strontium stannate strontium stannate and barium stannate have same properties the band gap for barium stannate is 3, whereas the band gap for strontium stannate is 4.5. Its band gap is higher. And effective ma mass is same for both the cases. So, when you, so typically we expect strontium stannate to have similar properties as that of barium stannate and give us high room temperature mobility, high room temperature mobility. So, all the thin films that I'm going to talk in this particular session are made by a technique called as molecular beam epitaxy system molecular beam epitaxy system wherein it is a thin film growth technique which is in which the chamber is maintained at ultra low pressures 10 to the power of minus 11 or 10 to the power of minus 12 when you compare it to the conventional sputtering in sputtering the background pressure is 10 to the power of minus 3 so this system is the cleanest system available for depositions and due to this cleanliness the mean free path of the particles moving in the chamber is increased and that's how you bet you get pristine film qualities pristine film qualities and here by using this technique by using this technique, a tetragonal SSO film lanthanum doped, since SSO strontium stannate is a wide band gap semiconductor, to see any sort of conductivity, to see any sort of conductivity, you need to put dopants. Just like in silicon is an insulator, if you want to make an n-type silicon, you put a phosphorus or a boron, or if you want a p-type silicon, you put R, uh, you you put uh, beryllium or some elements. Similarly, in strontium stannate, you put lanthanum to make it conducting, to make it conducting. So here is a, a transmission electron microscope picture, an atomic force picture, which shows the beauty of this technique. This by growing by using this technique, you can get layer by layer growth more phase pure systems and atomically smooth surfaces atomically smooth surfaces and the beauty of this techniques molecular beam epitaxy system is you can individually you can individually control you can individually control the stoichiometric ratios that is strontium stannate 113 strontium rich strontium is high stannate is less oxygen is again 3 thin rich strontium is less Thin is more and oxygen. So by using this technique, you can make your own recipe. You can make your own recipe. That is, whenever the film is stoichiometric, whenever the uh, 113 ratio is maintained, the film is in its nominal state and it is happy. But whenever you're introducing either strontium rich or thin rich, it introduces some sort of disorder in the system. Now, by, by using this disorder, can we control the electronic properties is the question. By intentionally putting disorders, can we control the properties is the question. So here is a graph which shows resistance versus temperature. Uh, there are three sets of graphs. The bottom blue and the pink were, are the stoichiometric films. The second set of films are the tin rich and the next set of the films are strontium rich. As, as films are grown stoichiometrically, they show minimum disorder. Minimum disorder uh, leads to minimum resistance as you are increasing the disorder the resistance of the film increases it is quite obvious just by looking at the patterns of resistance versus temperature here and you can see whenever you want to have an optimal device your stoichiometric condition should be maintained and on the other hand by maintaining the stoichiometric conditions by maintaining the stoichiometric conditions if you move on to a different substrate if you move on to, uh, it's like sitting on one uh, one chair versus other chair. If you are growing the same material on a different, uh, uh, if you want to grow the same material on a different chair, the bottom red one is a film grown on gallium scandent substrate, whereas the top film is grown on lanthanum aluminate film. Both offer different uh, amount of uh, lattice mismatches. Gallium scandent is more matched, that is its lattice parameters are more close to Swanson standard when compared to lanthanum aluminate. Due to this, you can see a drastic decrease in nominal resistance. And the same effect is also seen in terms of mobility. Whenever you are going stoichiometric films on 
stoichiometric films on uh, lanthanum oxide, the maximum mobility is 20. But whenever you are going uh, the same stoichiometric films on gallium scandate, your maximum mobility peaked up to peaked up to 50. So, in with respect to thin films, where you are growing, what is the interface effect? Here, the interface is creating local stress and strain that is useful in elevating the material properties. So. Uh, not only at high room temperature properties, if you look at low room temperature properties, both uh, uh, here is a comparison of stoichiometric, here is a comparison of stoichiometric film on lanthanum uh, LAO versus GSO. Both films show upturn at low temperatures. Both films show upturn at low temperatures. That means Whenever you have a metallic film, the metallic film resistance has to go down to, uh, when you decrease the temperature, it has to go down and saturate. But here it is increasing at low temperature. This increase is due to quantum nature of the carriers because remember electron is both, uh, electron has wave nature, electron has wave nature. So at low temperatures, what happens is your quantum nature is dominating and that quantum nature is adding additional resistance into the picture and that gives to a rising resistance. And when you are, when you want to analyze what is exactly affecting the properties, what you need to do is you need to apply a magnetic field and see and see the effect of mag magnetic field on these two films. Both the films, both the films showed negative magneto resistance. Whenever you see a negative magneto resistance in a metallic film at low temperatures, that is a signature of weak localization that is classically if you apply force on an electron it moves in straight directions but whenever you are uh, considering quantum nature the same picture is not obeyed because electron is a wave it has definite uh, size this uh, wave packet of one electron will try to interfere with the wave packet of other nearby electron and they form constructive interference. Whenever it forms a constructive interference, it moves in the forward direction. Whenever it forms destructive interference, it moves back. As it is moving back, the resist the electron is not going forward. So that's how your resistance is increasing at low temperatures. So uh, uh, the negative magneto resistance is uh, measured and it is modeled with uh, existing 2D weak localization mod model and 3D weak localization model. And you can see both the measured resistance exactly follow the proposed the proposed uh, models, which are uh, which are HLN based formulas. And in these, uh, the equation might be very big, but the left hand side is the measured resistance uh, del R by R square. And the right hand square, E square, 2 pi square, H is a constant. Psi is a digamma function. 1 by 2 is a constant. The only variable parameter is X, which is phase coherence length, electron phase coherence length. So this is defined as the minimum distance that the electron can travel without losing its information, just like an analog of main free path. So if you analyze those things, it will give you crucial informations. It will give you crucial informations of what type of scattering is present in these films at low temperatures. What type of scattering is present in these type of films at low temperatures. So it, it by, uh, by analysis, we come to a value of P is equals to one. That is the coefficient of T. It tells you that, it tells you that the type of scattering which is present in these films is electron electron scattering at low temperatures electron electron scattering at low temp at high temperatures you have phonon scattering and at low temperatures you have electron electron scattering which is dominant in these films in these films so this is the effect so and clearly you can see clearly you can see how lattice how lattice in the sense the mismatch between the grown film and the substrate affects the transport properties of these oxide based semiconductors now let me uh, uh, go uh, let me show you a different different effect of interface uh, uh, the first effect is lattice and the second effect is interface so again i grew uh, lanthanum doped sso films lanthanum doped sso films on gallium scandate substrate gallium scandate substrate and here 
the sample shows insulating behavior the sample shows insulating behavior that is the resistance of the sample increases with decrease in temperature resistance of the sample increases with decrease in temperature and, and at extreme low temperatures it depends exponentially it depends exponentially on the temperature a small change in the temperature will give rise to a large change in resistance a small change in temperature will give a large change in resistance so after measuring after measuring the pristine properties in zero magnetic field to get more insights of what is happening at low temperatures we measured magneto resistance we measured magneto resistance resistance in presence of magnetic field and interestingly at low temperatures hysteresis is seen hysteresis of resistance is seen in terms of magnetic field it's uh, if you just go by rule of thumb whenever you see hysteresis of resistance in magnetic field you you understand that material to possess some sort of magnetic nature some sort of a magnetic nature you take cobalt you take iron or you take any magnet magnetic lanthanum manganese any type of these elements they have hysteresis in their resistance in present the same is observed here so by just by this it gives us a conclusion that this material is having magnetic nature but unfortunately neither oxygen is magnetic nor stannate is magnetic not strontium is magnetic where is this magnetism coming is a big question where is this magnetism coming is big question so i just took one of the curve in this picture at 1.8 kelvin i am just zooming in here and here you can see from 0 to some bc the resistance is a smooth curve and suddenly and suddenly you see a sharp decrease in resistance again it goes back to high again at the same point the sharp resistance decrease in resistance is observed so this this points out that is this an intrinsic behavior or an extrinsic behavior is this an intrinsic behavior or an extrinsic behavior to further see to further see the effect what we did is we measured the thickness of lanthanum doped SSO is 12 nanometers undoped layer is 2 nanometers and the gallium substrate is bulk which is in centi uh, millimeter scale we just measured pure gallium standard we just measured pure gallium standard what we noticed is gallium scandit is a magnetocaloric effect that is whenever you increase the magnetic field whenever you increase magnetic field this material will get heated up and whenever you decrease the magnetic field this material will cool down so the substrate the gallium scandit is having this magnetocaloric nature what it is doing is whenever you are increasing the applied magnetic field the substrate is getting heated up as the sample's resistance is extremely de ex uh, dependent on temperature any small changes in that resist in temperature are picked up by the sample and the sample shows a drop in the resistance that is what is happening that is what is happening in this film so the effect that you are seeing the hysteresis in the mr magneto resistance is not coming from the substrate rather it is coming from the interface and what interface strontium standard and gallium standard interface the substrate is playing a key role in identifying mag hysteresis in magneto resistance so whenever one sees a mr in films especially in thin films you should be very very careful in analyzing whether the hysteresis is coming from the substrate or from the film or from the film so when you uh, when you measure uh, the magnetization versus temperature of uh, bulk gallium scandit bulk gallium scandit undergoes uh, phase transition right around 2.8 kelvin and the and the bumps what we see uh, in magneto resistance are only happening until 2.4 kelvin which is perfectly matching with the bulk nature so whatever we are seeing the bumps and the hiccups and uh, the bumps pitfalls and the hysteresis is just is just coming from is just coming from the substrate which is due to interface effect now the question is whether we can see this interface effect in all the samples in all the samples to see that we grew another controlled sample we grew another controlled sample but this sample is heavily doped and it has 
metallic behavior and at low temperatures the resistance of this sample is weakly dependent on temperature and if you do the same set of measurements now we do not see any hysteresis the reason being in the previous case the resistance of the sample at low temperatures extremely sensitive to temperature in this case it is not so and that you do not see any hysteresis so one should be very very careful in analyzing the magneto resistance hysteresis properties of films grown on magneto caloric substrates now so far what we did was so far what we did was we took Swanson stannate which is a wide band gap semiconductor and to see any sort of conduction in that we doped it we doped here here our dopant was lanthanum lanthanum goes to strontium site and it donates electron so whenever you are putting a dopant in a host element it introduces disorder it introduces disorder and this disorder this disorder will further decrease the carrier mobility this disorder will further decrease the carrier mobility so there is another way just like what i discussed in the previous session electrostat field effect gating electrostat field effect you take a gate oxide just like what you do in mosfets you apply the gate voltages depending upon the gate voltages the channel induced channel strength would be either increased or decreased uh, and thus you can modulate the resistance so instead of traditional gate oxide instead of traditional gate oxide here i am using ionic liquid or ion gel this ionic liquid or ion gel is consists of positive cations and negative anion cations and anions when subjected to an electric field they move to the opposite ends of the semiconductor as well as gate terminal and at the interface they form a nanoscale capacitor making the gate oxide thickness as one nanometer whenever your gate oxide thickness is one nanometer your induced carrier density would be high and that high enough induced carrier densities would give you a chance to explore material properties at high carrier densities which is not possible through chemical dopant and some of the examples of electrolyte gating are observed in STO in which they use the same technique to observe superconductor to insulate uh, metal transition in yttrium barium copper oxide which is a high temperature superconductor to again tune insulator to superconductor transition in neodymium nickelate to observe metal to insulator transition so in all these experiments what they did was instead of externally doping by a chemical element they used this technique which offers a disorder free environment and observed pristine transport properties so the same is is the same is achieved or uh, the same is expected in this transition standard and here is the film which is lithographically made and this is ion gel that ion gel is put on the sample and you apply the gate voltages and you can see when no gel is applied when no gel is applied the material resistance is around 10 to the power of 6 but when you apply the resistance when you apply the sorry when you apply the gate voltage the resistance drastically decreases to 10 to the power of 3 there is that means your resistance decreased from 1 mega ohm to 1 kilo ohm by using this technique 1 mega ohm to 1 kilo ohm see that is just by applying the gate voltage i change the resistance of the film by 1 mega ohm to 1 kilo ohm that is this technique offers resistance decreased by three orders and the, at the same time as i am decreasing the resistance the mobility is increased seven fold seven times the mobility is increased at zero volt the mobility was six and at and at uh, uh, high and uh, at high gate voltage the mobility is 40 that is the seven fold increase was observed in this particular film this is the beauty of this technique in a disorder free environment you can enhance mobility by seven times especially in this film and resistance by three times not only high temperature properties you can also vary the low temperature quantum properties again at low temperatures you see negative magneto resistance which is a signature of weak localization and when you fit that you can change the coherence length phase coherence length of this particular material from 90 nanometers to 120 nanometers that is that is every right now people are going crazy towards quantum computing what is quantum computing in quantum computing people take the advantage of wave nature of an electron wave nature of an electron 
and they will try to store the information in terms of wave packets. So whenever an electron is traveling from one point to other point without losing its information, that is called as phase coherence length. So by using this experiment, you can vary that phase coherence length from 90 nanometers to 120 nanometers. 90 nanometers to 120 nanometers. So a variable phase coherence length is up achieved and this can be readily used in making quantum computers at low temperatures. This can be readily used in quantum computers at low temperatures. So in traditional, in traditional uh, MOSFET based designs, you have traditional SiO2 or if you are going for high K dielectrics, Al2O3, hafnium oxide or other oxides which are inorganic molecules. But this electrolyte, this electrolyte being an organic molecule which has cations and anions, there is a finite, not a finite, there is a big probability, big chances of these organic molecules to go inside the material and change the properties. So to observe whether that is being observed here. So here is a sample, a different sample wherein you see a zero volt, it shows metallic behavior. Once I'm applying negative voltages, I am pulling, carry, I'm depleting the channel. I'm depleting the channel. As I'm depleting the channel, the resistance is increasing. On the positive sides, I'm inducing carriers into the channel. The resistance is decreasing. The resistance is decreasing. So here is a control experiment at 280 Kelvin, at 280 Kelvin, wherein the uh, gate voltage is varied from zero to four minus four and from minus four to plus four. You see the corresponding change in resistance. Initially, the, re the change in resistance is zero. Right after the experiment, right after the experiment, the resistance retained to its pristine value. That means none of the ions, organic ions are going into the channel, into the material. All the effect, whatever you are seeing here is just due to electrostatic nature. No electrochemistry is seen here. No electrochemistry is seen here. Everything is electrostatic because this is very, very detrimental in determining the properties. There are many other oxide based systems wherein electrochemistry happens. That is the uh, organic cations and anions will go into the host material, change its chemical composition and that's how they will get different material properties. But here that's not the case. Everything is purely electrostatic in nature, purely electrostatic in nature. To see why we are getting this electrostatic in nature, what we did is, remember uh, during the starting of the class, because we have an advantage of growing a layer by layer, we give stoichiometric films, we give non-stoichiometric films. We took a film which is non-stoichiometric, which is transition rich and did the same experiment, similar, extremely under similar experimental conditions, same experiment is performed. And you can see when zero, uh, no gel is present, the black curve corresponds to your pristine nature. After repeated, after repeated measurements, you see uh, once you clean the sample and remeasure the sample, the sample resistance changed from insulating behavior to metallic behavior, giving a hint, not a, a, suggesting us that some sort of electrochemistry has happened in this film which is not the case in the previous film. Why? The, diff the only change between this film and that film is, the previous film is a stoichiometric film, uh, which is highly resistant to electrochemistry, whereas this is a non-stoichiometric film, which possesses some charge defects, and these charge defects are attracting the organic cations and anions, which are present in the ionic liquid, changing its chemical composition. Whenever the chemical composition is changed, the resistance changed, the resistance changed. So just to uh, further give you an assertion, at 280 Kelvin, the first one is the black curve, minus one volt, it retained to minus one volt. But when I applied minus two volt, you can see the pristine resistance is not coming back to the dashed line. Rather, it is increasing. The same thing with minus three, the same thing with minus four. The same thing can be observed, uh, observed at both negative voltages and positive gate voltages in a non-stoichiometric film. And this is a uh, this is how the material uh, resistance continuously degrading. So initially uh, you are starting from zero. That means no change in resistance at zero volt. But once you reach a point plus four volt, a 50% of change is observed. A 50% of change is observed. That is 
your resistance behavior completely changes that means it is giving you a sense it, it is giving you a sense of you have changed the intrinsic material composition in, 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 intrinsic material composition so for a stoichiometric measurement for a no, stoichiometric uh, sample you do n number of measurements it retains its original value but whereas for a non stoichiometric sample if you do the same set of measurements its pristine nature changes so this 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 is a first experimental evidence of stoichiometry effect of stoichiometry on electrolyte gated experiment so whenever you are performing an electrolyte gated experiments you should be you should be very very perfect about the stoichiometry that is the host materials chemical composition if chemical composition differs by a tiniest amount you will see this unwarranted effects you will you'll see these unwarranted effects uh, let me skip this and go to a different material system okay so the same technique the same technique is applied to an other material system which is gallium oxide uh, if you remember uh, the, right during uh, inauguration uh, session uh, professor uh, vijay gunturu sir was saying the us is projected to convert all of their devices into power electronic devices that is 80% of the devices are going to be power electronics but the big question uh, professor gunturu had raised is whether we can catch up with those power 80% uh, uh, huge shift for that we need to come up with different power handling materials one such material is beta doped gallium oxide one such uh, material is beta doped gallium oxide which is a wide band gap semiconductor oxide which can be used as a transparent conducting oxide and it has high electrical breakdown voltage high electrical breakdown voltage which is used to make high power devices if you here is the graph which simply compares simply compares the existing existing all power electronic devices are either made up of silicon carbide or gallium nitride so they have a band gap of 3 to 4 electron volts and they break down at a voltage of 2 megavolt per centimeter or 3 megavolt per centimeter but if you use this material but if you use this material the breakdown voltage is almost triple from 2 to or quadruple from 2 to 8 megavolts and that is the beauty of this particular material system and one more one more advantage of this material is there are many material systems uh, host material subsets unlike in Swanson state wherein you have the effect of lattice mismatch here you have bulk gallium oxide wherein you can grow this material in thin film forms in thin film forms and achieve zero lattice mismatch and zero disorder and this particular material can also be exfoliated much like graphene which gives you an additional control of nanoscale control in making electronic devices especially power devices so with that in mind the same experiment is followed the same experiment is followed gallium oxide which is a semiconductor put put it on a uh, beta doped uh, iron doped beta gallium oxide again use the gated gating technique ionic gel technique to put induced carriers so let me show you the final result so here you can see as i'm increasing the gate voltage as i'm increasing the gate voltage the mobility of induced carrier increases the mobility of the induced carrier increases uh, from 300 kelvin to 125 kelvin 80 kelvin 60 at all measured temperatures the mobility increases with increased increased uh, uh, carrier densities whenever you have more carrier density in the film what happens is if you have any native defects these high enough carrier densities will screen those defects and it offers a free ride for the electrons to move in an effort to give high mobilities so with this techniques on the present uh, uh, state of the art beta uh, cvd grown beta doped beta gallium oxide films we achieved a highest mobility so far so here is a graph you can see uh, beta doped gallium oxide at room temperature grown at different carrier densities grown at different carrier densities using different techniques uh, the highest mobility was around 170 but by using this technique but by using this technique we ha we could achieve a highest mobility of 200 square uh, centimeter square per volt second in this material in an effort to make 
room temperature power device room temperature power device that is whenever you are putting a high gate applied positive gate voltages you are putting more carriers as more carriers are put these carriers will screen any ionized impurities or charge defects present in the system as the defects are screened the electron can move freely as the electron can move freely the mobility increased that is what you are seeing in these type of films again since this is an electros electrolyte dependent measurements we again did careful set of measurements to see if the effect is coming from electrochemistry or electrostatic again by using this control set of measurements you can see the pristine nature of resistance was started at 9 kilo ohm and after all the set of measurements it retained its original value that means again in these systems whenever you are using electrolyte gated techniques whenever you are using electrolyte gated techniques the electrostatics is playing a major role and no electrochemistry is seen no electrochemistry is seen in the system it gives you a sense of feeling if you implement the same in real time applications the films would not be degraded and it would be more reliable and and more reliable in achieving your power control electronic devices at nano scale at nano scale so uh, uh, i hope this session has given you a sense of electrolyte gated technique and how this electrolyte gated technique is uh, implemented in lanthan and dope transition standard to to achieve seven fold increase in mobility and also how you can use the same technique on a different material system and yet achieve highest reported mobility so far in the literature using this technique so this technique is a very very powerful technique to explore fundamental material properties in a defect or a disorder free environment with that uh, again i would like to thank all the participants for patiently listening to this talk and i'm open to and uh, these are my funding agencies i would like to thank my nsf marsec and uh, air force uh, usa air force department for funding this project and these are my collaborators without which i couldn't have finished these projects and with this i would like to say thank you to all the participants and i'm open to any of the questions i'm open to any of the uh, questions okay participants are requested to ask questions if they are having any doubts in this presentation as of now we are having uh, as of now we are having lakshman rajesh sir on the but uh, this session is completely uh, finished completely if you are having to interfere or interpret anything means please ask i'm open to any questions if you have any if you have any doubts please or any queries or any suggestions or anything need to clarify please participants i uh, i just left i just uh, put in my email id in the chat box if you have any personal questions you are more than welcome to reach out to me at that my email laxman raju l a x m a n raju dot t at s r u dot e d u n dot in if you have any questions outside this talk and uh, i am available if you have any questions i am more than happy to answer your questions at this point of time okay as there is no questions uh, we wind up the session as of now have a better lunch and join back by 2 2 two o'clock 2 pm shortly i sincerely thank dr lakshman raju sir for his valuable time for the entire forenoon session and his experiential inputs regarding fab fabrications and other things this expertise i think it will be helpful you to reach the better extent thank you very much sir thank thank and, you thank uh, you leader sir and thank you and, participants and the feedback link we will share once again you can go you can fill up the feedback form for the session 2 by lakshman raju sir itself uh, we will share it in your whatsapp group as well as in the google meet shortly thank you very much we will join back by 2 pm thank you thank you guys